Hi everyone, uh, it's me here, Hakma Lau. I'm trying to um, explain to you some of the background and, and tell you more about how to do well in assignment two. Um, speaking of which, so we, we are on assignment two because I think most of you have already done assignment one. So the deadline is always Friday, uh, sorry, always Monday, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And if you met that deadline, great, good for you. Uh, and also that would be also the deadline for uh, background assignment as well. And I saw that many of you have already completed background assignment. So now the class has uh, over 130 people. If you fail to meet the deadline, what happens? Well, uh, background assignment, that's already the late deadline. And accordingly, assignment one would also have a late deadline that's one week late. But I, um, in, the, in, the, in the prices, the, the explanation on the website, we made it very clear that you have to submit on-time assignment to, to be qualified for these prices. And I know that sometimes you will be late. So if you are late for your assignment, that we, you will still count your assignment, but you only get half of the price there. So you get a 50% slash. So not so good. So don't, don't do that. Try to be on time. And also because the, the weekly assignment was stacked together. So if you're late for one week, you will just make it harder for the other week. And things unfortunately will get harder. Uh, which also is part of what I want to talk about. Um, the I saw that many of you um, start asking questions on the Discord channels, and that's good. And people are helping each other, which is also great. We will uh, we will actually reward some of you for doing that, uh, as we'll announce in the next couple of days. But I think one thing is from the question, I can see that some of you are also quite new to the to the space, and that might be the first time you you use. Circum or any of, of this stuff, and that's fine. This is a course that we don't we don't actually screen people uh, in a very stringent way. We welcome everyone to give it a try. But I also want to say, like, as to think we get harder. So if you already struggle with some basic issues, um, you might actually find it impossible to continue the course. So that happens, and if that we will try to help you. But in the end, I think all of you understand you also won't be doing it full time and different people are starting somewhere. If, if the learning time end up being really impossible with your schedule, don't despair. I think I would suggest you to try as hard as you can. Um, but if it doesn't work out this round, we will we'll off, we'll offer this course again uh, in May. So basically every two months we'll offer this course. As from what I can see from here, we will be able to continue this for the coming year at least. So, so there should be many opportunities to continue. If it doesn't work out, if you really get stuck at some point, just you know, go back to, to learn the basics. Some of you may not even be very proficient in Solidity and that I definitely recommend you um, to go back and, and really do it well first. The prices may change. The syllabus, of course, will change a little bit. We'll update. We'll try to improve the course, but the basic uh, setup of the course really wouldn't. Uh, we are meant to to set it up for for um, most importantly decentralized basic income. That is, as you've learned to launch a product, your product launch would attract funding that would basically pay you recurrently up to ten thousand dollars or more a year. So. Um, because of that, I also also say um, don't plagiarize uh, because you you know there's another chance. So if it doesn't work out, don't cheat. It, it wouldn't work. Um, largely, the reason is that because you finally have to launch your product to qualify for the completion price. So just by cheating a little bit here and there wouldn't work. I shouldn't call it cheating. I think many of you just are doing it together, and you might your, your assignment might turn up to be turn out to be very similar. But I think it's important because it, after all, is an academic setting. Uh, in, in protocols, we can fork each other's code when, in building, that's fine because it's open source. But as an assignment, you must do your own work. So, you know, just studying together is fine, helping each other is fine, but write your own words and especially write your own code. You can't really copy other people's code. Um, it, if you get caught, we have to kick you out, unfortunately, because this is, after all, a kind of pedagogical academic setting plagiarism really is the highest crime you can commit so don't do that but the the also the issue is it just wouldn't work because even if you manage to get away with you know turning in assignments to get the completion price you need to launch your own product and that you have to do it on your own i don't think other people will do it for you so wouldn't work um okay so let's move on to the 
main topic I want to talk about. It's actually related to a little bit what I talked about earlier about, about asking questions. So I saw that this already came up in a discussion on our Discord channel. Someone helpfully uh, pointed out, you know, if you want to talk about your problem, there are different ways to talk about. It. You can just like paste a screenshot and say, okay, it doesn't work. Tell me how. That's okay. We'll try to help you. But that's not the most efficient way or effective way to ask the question. It's often better to tell people, describe people what you're trying to achieve and tell people what you've tried and what it doesn't work. At least try to do some troubleshooting of, you know, on your own first. And in fact, that's how we all learn to work. If someone just handhold you through the whole process, you wouldn't be learning. Much of learning how to how to code is learning how to troubleshoot. So so try a bit, you know, go online and search for resources before you just, you know, ask for help. And and that's about the, the basic assignment questions. But in assignment two, you see that we have a different kind of questions. We want you to imagine that you are meeting with the, the protocol owners or builders uh, behind some actual protocols like Samovore and Tornado Cash. And these are two of the most used CK products uh, online today. And I want you to, um, there are demos that we've given you um, that, that show you how the, the, the protocol works and lots of online resources anyway, you can, you can study the, the protocol. I want you to ask the question to the protocol owner. So imagine you're meeting the people who built Semivore and the people who built Tornado Cash, whom actually we've met in the last, last uh, cohort. So imagine you're meeting that person, you have one chance to ask a question, what would you ask? Now, this sounds like very open-ended, you can do anything, but let me tell you as an academic, this is something I, I always tell my students as well. Asking a question is in fact, one of the most important skill, uh, one of the best thing you can do as a person starting out in the field, because you know when you go to a conference, let's say you go to Eve Denver, you don't always get to talk. People don't always give you a slot to talk for 20 minutes. Um, and people don't always have time to listen to what you want to say or what you want to do. But whoever they are, if you ask them about their work, they, they usually re respond to you. In fact, even if you co-call them, they usually respond to you because you know that's their work. So by asking a question, you almost get guaranteed the, the little spotlight to, to, um, to really say something really and people will pay attention to you. So there are different ways of asking questions. Uh, some people then understood the importance of asking a question and they just jam a lot of jargons into the question and try to make the question a show off of what, what they've learned. And that usually doesn't work. It almost completely doesn't work. Asking a question is not an occasion for showing off what you've known. Uh, it doesn't work like that. At least just jamming a lot of jargon into it just doesn't, the question should be concise. It first and foremost in any academic writing, the, there's only one thing that matter. People have to understand you and people often don't understand you because it's actually very difficult. Uh, so don't try to jam in more jargon. Don't try to make your, your, your phrasing fancy and use big words and big phrases and don't do that. Just ask in the plainest, simplest English that you can, you can, you can generate and just ask it directly and plainly. And then there's an issue that the question can be very pedestrian. We call it very, very, very boring, very vanilla. So you can ask a question that anyone can ask um, or, or the question answer might be very easily, um, you know, searchable online. So that's not very good. Um, that, that would show that you are not particularly knowledgeable or thoughtful. Um, that showed that you are lazy. You haven't looked for the, if the answer is basically already there, uh, then don't, I mean, you can do, you can ask those questions, but they will be kind of pedestrian. So what are the really good questions are questions where you almost make the, 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 um, the, the author, make the, make the speaker or, or the, whoever, whoever the recipient of the question is make them think about something they haven't thought about. So in this context, um, mostly we talk about something constructive. So I come from philosophy and, and neuroscience. In philosophy, sometimes you will hear questions that are just hostile. People <laughs> would go to seminars and ask questions where they basically challenge the speaker and say, well, you said that, but you also said that you clearly contradict yourself. Tell me which one is wrong. I've heard questions like that all the time. 
in our context, we are a group of builders. We are not academics who try to do these kind of pissing contests. Uh, so, so don't don't do that. It wouldn't. You don't exactly want to be hostile, but try to do something that show that you fought through something and and my you know make the make this make the recipient of the question think a, think a bit. So something like suggestions. Um, the ideal question would be constructive comments. Like so, in your protocol, you seem to be doing that. But I wonder why don't we do something else that might be more efficient, or um, would, would, wouldn't that also be a, another way of doing it that would have these advantages? So you can ask questions that are constructive like that, basically suggest alternative ways to do it, or there might be really some parts of the protocol you don't understand that why do we do this? Because this sounds like a roundabout way of achieving our goals here. Why don't we do something more straightforward? And quite often the answer would not be so exciting. The answer might be, yeah, we know, but we don't have time or it's just too much work and someone else should do it, but not us. That might be like that. But sometimes you really got a, an answer like people would think, wow, we hadn't thought about that. What a great idea. Uh, in fact, thinking about it is such a no brainer. We should be doing that. Maybe we should actually implement it. And if you manage to ask a question like that, then you really would impress the colleague and and if you keep doing that, the, basically the world is yours. So by asking questions, you can actually achieve a lot. And I will explain later why we want the whole class to do this. Because part of the, um, the game here, as we, as we explain, is, is that we're trying to build a DAO of CK developers. So by graduating this course, launching a product, you'll be invited to the DAO, and that's where you will get your basic income. And ultimately, as a group, how do we engage with the industry is a very important um, is a, part, a very important factor as to how 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 we'll be recognized. So I want to start this process, get your input, get the best questions, and we'll take your questions and actually go and approach some of the um, some of these colleagues in the industry. And later on, as a, when you when you get to join CK DAO, that would become even more exciting. So think hard about the questions. In fact, the questions are. What you clearly can't plagiarize. We talk a bit about that. It would really distinguish who you are just by that, you know, 100 words or so, uh, or even shorter, asking that question, you can be remembered and you can be distinguished there. So, hope you enjoy this exercise and we'll talk again next week. <laughs>